morning spotlight and happy Sunday everybody. We are again coming to you from our homes. I am at my house in Hubbard, Ohio with uh, Fred Housel behind the camera and Molly stage left helping us out the best she can. Um, the reason is none, nobody on our team has COVID-19 but there are so many people out there, I'll knock on wood as I say that, um, there are so many people out there that do right now. So we're trying to do our best to make sure that we stay socially distanced and still participate in the way that we can within the community in a safe way. And we just wanna make sure that everybody that we love um, stays happy and healthy. And we have quite a show for you. Don't worry, we still get out there wearing our masks, doing everything that we possibly can uh, to make sure that we're still bringing you some great stories. And I know Mike Case is standing by in Talmadge, Ohio, with a wonderful photographer helping him out this evening. So Michael, I'll send it over to you, okay? Yeah, thanks Lauren, here in Talmadge, Ohio, or some people call it Talmadge, Ohio. Uh, Mario running the camera right now, but I think we're gonna switch on and off as we go along. And we're representing the people that don't have their Christmas trees up yet. It's okay, you don't have to rush out and get your Christmas tree up. It's gonna get up, we know it, just like here at this house as well. Uh, I think we have a good show for you, and we thought it would be better just to keep separated. It's hard to do a show with a mask on your face, and uh, all the uh, segments we did, we had to take our mask off real quick, do our segment, put it back on, so uh, we try to keep people as safe as possible. We have some fun things to talk about today. I get to go to a great, healthy, fresh new restaurant in Niles. I got to find out how to clean the fridge. If you have stainless steel, you might want to uh, keep an eye on that one. Uh, we're gonna have a, a, a take a look back at a Friendsgiving that we had last year. And a lot of you might know, if you're on Facebook, you know the story of Kristen Fox. She got sick, went in the hospital, went into a coma, and ended up waking up without her arms or her legs. It's a really powerful story, but it's not so, so much about that. It's about what she's doing now and how she's being an advocate for other people. extremely independent person yeah. so um, I did a lot myself took care of things myself I'm kind of a go-getter and a do-it-yourself because if you want it done you do it right yourself all that changed for Kristen Fox back in March she went from being an independent woman and principal in camel to the hospital with the flu I honestly in my mind said I was like you probably have a one like you have influenza because like corona was not prevalent in our area, you mm -hmm. know, it was in China. I just had like a chest cold, didn't feel good, went to the doctor and Tamiflu out for five days of work. And that was it, like, and I went home and then the rest is history. The chest cold had turned into the flu, double pneumonia, collapsed lungs and sepsis. And after she got out of her medically induced coma, she realized the doctors had to amputate both her arms and her legs. So it was really foggy at first. I had like this crazy dream that I swear lasted like six weeks. And when I woke up, I had to like start to piece together what was real and what was this dream. Like I could tell you the details of this dream still now, it was crazy. And so like I woke up and my dad was there that day that I was waking up because only fam one family member was in it a lot of the time because of COVID. So um, I woke up and my dad, you know, like was trying to hold it together, but you know, I'm his daughter, no matter how old I am. And it did shock me, but like, I don't know what in my like being just was like, don't cry. Like it is what it is what it is. Like I couldn't change it. I mean, like to put it bluntly, it sucks. You know, like it, it was terrible, but I don't know, like my dad was just like, we'll do whatever, you know, like Mike's behind you. And I have the most amazing group of friends. Um, and I knew that they would be behind me. So her husband, Mike, and her gang of friends put Kristen first, not just by doing things for her, but by assuring they were with her for the long haul. Her life changed and theirs were changing too. They, from day one, were like, rally together, let's do this, like, we're gonna do it for her. And like, sometimes do I feel bad? Yes, but they always remind me, like, they're here for me. So Kristen got new, state-of-the-art prosthetic arms and hands. 
So they're called myoelectric hands and they are working with my mind. The ele electrodes and flexors in your arms, um, they are muscles in your arms and your muscle bellies that were here, but I can use like the um, nub of my hand to move that. So I'm telling it to close open and it does different things. I can move the wrist into different positions. So like I moved it towards me now, I move the thumb into different positions to do different things. So it's pretty cool. And new legs went along with them. This gave her the opportunity to be more mobile, but what happened next shocked everybody. I walked the first day. Like as soon as they put them on me, I just did it. And I walked 250 feet that day and they were like, oh my God, like no one does this with one leg, let alone with two. And with that, more milestones along the way. Kristen was even able to go on their yearly camping trip at the end of the summer. Getting out the door, getting in the van, going somewhere. Like we just went on our annual camping trip and my friends made sure that everything we do, every tradition we do there, we've done it for 11 years with the same group of people, didn't change this year. You know, I hate to ask for help sometimes, but I've learned that I don't have a choice anymore. It takes a lot to be a woman in leadership, um, you know, stepping into that role. And I think I've always had that mindset of like, I know I can do it and I will do it. My dad will tell you that I will never take no for an answer my whole life. And that kind of has paid off in this. You know, I've just always been driven. Now Kristen is driven to make changes in the world today. I want to be a voice for people who um, don't necessarily have the mental capacity sometimes or the physical capacity to make changes. Like we say that we are ADA compliant but like being compliant and being truly accessible are two different things. Um, and to be able to live a life that if you're in a chair that's 42 inches wide, you can go into any door. You know, sometimes you can't do that and you don't realize it till you're sitting in this position mm -hmm. and sitting at this level. I see things very differently. With her husband, her kids, and her friends at her side, don't bet against Kristen. The person inside hasn't changed. This valley, and I will say it over and over, has supported me and been behind me and been behind my family that like, I read Facebook posts, I read emails, and I'm like, I have people cheering for me now. You know, and I have people like motivating me and they'll tell me like they had a bad day and then they think of me and they move on from it. I'm still using a walker, but I will stand on my own. My goal is by March 9th, the year that everything happened, is to be up and walking on my own. Because, you know, I'm disabled in some ways, but I'm still very able. And I will still do all the things that I set to do in my life, just in a different way. I just have to get there differently. All I can say is, wow, I'm sure you're saying the same thing at home. And like she said, whenever you're having a bad day, things don't look so bad. If you think about that, it's not so bad after all. So if you want to go to her Facebook page, they have some, she has some great friends and a great family. It's called Keep Fighting Kristen, and you can support her that way. They're going to have some events coming up throughout the holidays, so keep an eye out for that. Lauren, what'd you think? Mike, we've been looking forward to that story for a very long time. Unbelievable to see how successful she is now. Thank you for that one. All right, we're going to take a look back in time to a day when it was okay to have all of our family and friends travel from out of town for Thanksgiving. Mark Canzanetta has a look at a Thanksgiving feast with his two daughters that I know will bring a smile to everyone's face. Welcome to the Test Kitchen, everybody. We're here today at my house, and I'm welcoming my daughter, Gina and Amy. We're going to be cooking Thanksgiving dinner, okay, and sharing some memories of Thanksgiving dinner and what we used to do at our house and what we're translating, and my girls are going to do at their house one day. That is Isn't that awesome? So what we're going to do today is we're going to make some turkey poutine, okay? Gina's frying the French fries. We have some Kennebec fries. Amy's helping her fry the fries. We're going to make some gravy. So we're going to start off with some butter, and I like to use sweet unsalted butter. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a roux to make that gravy. So we're going to have flour to the butter. We're going to stir it in. Got a lot of smoke going on right now. And then we're going to add some stock. And this is the turkey stock that you had left over from Thanksgiving. 
and you can get that recipe at bistro1907.com and it is from the cooking liquid that you roasted your turkey with. And we're just gonna take that and put it in there like that. We're gonna take a sachet of herbs, thyme and rosemary, and then we're gonna talk to my kids. Girls, what do you remember about Thanksgiving dinner? And what do you remember? I always remember uh, my dad would bring home uh, people from the restaurant who didn't have, uh, you know, families to go home to, and we would always just have like, random people at the house and we would all, you know, get together and have a great time and it was all, you know, always a big variety of people. It and was, it was. Yeah, it was a great mishmash special. of people. Yeah. It was always a lot of fun. And I think I've carried that on with my fiance and I. We live in Tampa and we always have a Friendsgiving and we invite all other friends that don't have family in Tampa and we have a big get together and everybody kind of brings over a dish and we all kind of celebrate Thanksgiving together. So, so we've kind of done that, you know, you've carried on the tradition. Mm -hmm. Right. That's awesome. Right. So we're going to make this, this is kind of almost like the day after Thanksgiving dish. This is like after you have your leftovers, we have the turkey legs and the thighs. We're going to turn that into some gravy. We have the carrots, onions, and celery from the cooking process of the turkey. And we're just going to stir that together. together. And this is going to come together and make a rich, great gravy. And we're going to make poutine. Do you guys know what poutine is? Poutine. It's going to be french fries with the gravy on top and cheese curd, right? It is, exactly. We're going to take these french fries, and these are double fried Kennebec fries. And we have this beautiful french fries that she just cooked. We double cooked them. We're going to take that beautiful gravy that we've allowed to reduce, and we have more right back here. Look at that beautiful, rich, luxurious gravy. We're going to take some cheddar cheese curds, because that's the whole thing about poutine. It's like late night munchy food. You have french fries that everybody loves, you have cheese everybody loves, but now we're going to put a rich gravy on top that's made with the carrots, the onions, and celery, the rich turkey broth, and it's going to melt those cheddar cheese curds and go over that gravy. And this is going to be a great day after or day of Thanksgiving, day of dish that you can serve. I like to garnish that with a little bit of rosemary leaves because it goes really, really well with the turkey, the cheese curds. A little bit of fresh ground pepper on top. And girls, what else do we need with this? Sure. <laughs> okay. More cheese? More cheese. Okay, we're going to put more cheese. There we go. We're going to put more cheese. We can never have too much cheese. We can never have too much cheese. We're going to take this and we're going to bring it to our Thanksgiving dinner table and go from there. No hot water? Call A to Z Dependable Services. Our fully stocked rapid response water heater specialist will get you back in hot water in no time. A to Z is the only call you need to make. Hi, I'm Barbara Corcoran. I'm constantly asked by news sources how to best navigate today's real estate market. I call the brightest agents in the business to get their input. Hi Kelly, what's going on in the Mahoney Valley area? Hi Barbara, the market in the Mahoney Valley has remained strong. I'm so happy to hear that. Sellers are enjoying the safety of the Guaranteed Sold program and buyers and sellers love the 3D tour and the free moving truck. Get the best advice from my friend Kelly Warren. Go to kellysoldit.com. Be safe and smart. Well, Ducat not only sells the product, but we service them. We have parts and service support for every machine that you buy at Ducat. Um, you are purchasing a machine, it's eventually going to break or need work, and we are here to do that. Uh, you don't get that from an online sale or a mass merchant. They just don't have the ability to have the parts and the service. We send our mechanics to school every year. We have two Briggs & Stratton master service technicians. There are not many in the country, probably less than 5,000 in the country, and we have two at Ducut. And we also have gold certified steel mechanics uh, and numerous certifications in parts and service for, for every brand that we carry. So let yourself go to Ducut. Let yourself go. Welcome back to the Test Kitchen. We're here at our family dinner for Thanksgiving. I'm here with my beautiful daughters, Gina and Amy, my lovely wife, Melissa, and we're about to carve a turkey for Thanksgiving. So, you know, one of the things that everybody talks about at Thanksgiving is they bake this beautiful, gorgeous bird. They take all the time and the care to brine it, bake it, roast it. Then they get to the carving part and they're like, oh my God, what do I do? So there's some simple tips we can help follow everybody through and to make it a lot easier and a lot less stressful. So what do you like, Melissa? Do you like white meat or dark meat? I like white. I like the breast. 
Yep. Me oh too. my god, I'm the only one. That's better for me because <laughs> yeah. I get all the dark meat. <laughs> I mean, most of the chefs in the world like the dark meat. So one of the simple things you want to do is you want to cut down what's called the keel bone. And the keel bone is right in the center of the turkey. And you want to take a very sharp knife. You want to have a carving knife. If you don't have a carving knife, one of the great kids tools you can buy is a electric carving knife. And that really does a great job as well. So you want to take your fork, push it into the breast and you want to carve down the bone. And it goes right down the side of the bone, so it gives you a natural way to follow, so you don't really have to think about it. It's like it already has a diagram, a road map, of how to carve off that turkey breast. And you're just following it down the natural way of the bone. And we're gonna take that off, and we're gonna pull it out, and we have that beautiful turkey meat. So now, we like to carve in thin slices, about a quarter of an inch thick. And you can tell when you have a really sharp knife because it goes through it like butter. Just like that. And I'm gonna give some to Amy. There you go. Just like that. And to serve with that, we have some sweet potato, bacon, and kale hash. You can get that at Bistro 1907. We have a wonderful mashed potato gratin that my brother made for me. And then we have that beautiful turkey poutine. So, and what goes good with Thanksgiving dinner, guys? Wine. Wine. Wine, okay. And we have a great bottle today. We're drinking Silver Oak. And we're having a great time with family and friends. So what's one of your favorite Thanksgiving memories? My favorite is just being with family and Drinking white wine, I love that at Thanksgiving, and the smell when you wake up in the morning. Mine's the smell. When you wake up and you go downstairs and you smell the cooking of the turkey, the celery, and the cooking of the stuffing, celery and onions. And one thing you have to have at Thanksgiving is you have to have a little bit of butter in your food. It's one of those days where you let yourself go a little bit and you have butter. What about you, Gina? What's one of your favorite things? I think the same. Family. We, all, we have a big family and being around everybody is special. Dad makes the best Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, I don't know about that. So it's, you know, that's something that we all look forward to always. So. All right. Amy? Um, well, now that you have your own family. Yeah, well, I love bringing them here now as well, um, but gravy. <laughs> <laughs> gravy is one of the best things. All right, everybody. Here's to you and your families to a blessed, happy Thanksgiving. From our family to yours. Cheers. Cheers. Everybody, eyes, eyes, Bye. eyes. Bye. All right, salute. Good to see those girls smiling, even better to see Mark in his element doing everything he loves to do for friends and family. If you can't go out, go to Bistro1907.com. All of the recipes are there for you. So many over the years, we're very, very proud of Mark. So stay with us. We will be right back with more of the home edition of Valley Spotlight. Salt Me is a company that produces products that are made out of Himalayan sea salt. I have a love affair with Himalayan sea salt. And as an ear, nose, and throat doctor, the most important thing for me is that the products are gonna be effective and that they're gonna be safe for patients. So I make products that help sinus conditions and I make products that are going to be good for the skin and good for the body. And all of them are made of Himalayan sea salt. Welcome back to Valley Spotlight, another extreme home edition, just trying to stay safe. A lot of you folks probably have some people coming over for the holidays. Not a lot of people, because you're not allowed, but maybe a couple. Uh, so you want your place to look good. And if you want to hang up the kids' uh, paintings and artwork or put those Christmas cards on the fridge, you want it to be nice. And a lot of you folks have stainless steel fridges, just like us. So uh, we thought we'd talk to the boss lady about how to clean those things off and make everything look spick and span for the holidays. Hey, welcome. Another household hint and hack with our boss lady, Jamie, and uh, we're talking about refrigerators. Yeah. Now. 
And this is this is yours. Yes. You swore you'd never get stainless steel. Because it's a pain, but it looks so nice. It does when it when your kids don't touch it. And you fell for it. I did. <laughs> well, there you go. So now you gotta clean it. Yes. Alright. Let's talk about stainless steel then. A lot of times you'll get these fingerprints on it, especially yes. if you have the kids. Yeah, and there is stainless steel polish, which works fine if the fridge is clean. Okay. Um, polish doesn't really work if it's grimy, so you've got to clean it first. All right, and so, but this is very clean, and we're just kind of worried about the fingerprints themselves, yes. right? All right, so what do we do? So for this fridge, I use this barkeeper's friend. Uh -huh. um, I, there's, this time, Where there's- Where do you get that? Anywhere. Anywhere you can get it? Yeah, they have okay. this, they have a spray, they have a powder. Okay. Um, I like the powder the most. All right. But, um, it almost looks like the old Comet yes, cleanser, doesn't it? But that's really hard for me to take to different houses because okay. of this, and it gets everywhere, I all see. over. So. Okay. But yeah, so this works just as well, I think. And only thing I do is I get a towel wet uh -huh. and put a little bit of this on there. Okay. And I hold that for you. I know. And then you go. So you should always go with the grain of your stainless. Okay. Um, because it cleans easier. So once I get that, all those fingerprints off mm -hmm. and scrubbed down, then that barkeeper's friend will leave a residue. So you want to take another wet cloth mm -hmm. and wipe it off. Well, that's got some shine to it, doesn't it? Yeah. We could see ourselves in there, <laughs> almost. And then once I've got that residue off, I mm -hmm. even take a third cloth and like if you have any streaks, you're just going to buff it out. It kind of just magically disappears anyway. Yeah. Now, other fridges that don't have this kind of material in the front, what do you use to clean those? Or do you even have to worry about it? Um, yeah, I wipe them down with just like a multi-surface cleaner. Mm -hmm. um, but they're they're not too bad. And then sometimes these, the stainless steel fridges, get rust spots. Have you ever seen those? I wanted to ask you about that. It kind of happens around the freezer, right? Yeah. Okay. So I found out the same thing, that barkeeper's friend. Mm -hmm. You take it and you just scrub in those spots and you can make it go away. And the rust comes off. Yeah. You said one thing on these, that, that rubber seal sometimes get gunked up. Yeah, they get right? gunky and okay. moldy. Um, like right here. Yeah, this oh, you one, can see it. that's a bunch of food from my children. Now, how does that happen? No. Are they eating over the freezer? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> see? And so there's actually, you can get mold in there too, and you can use, like I told you for the window tracks, you can use vinegar in there and mm -hmm. it gets rid of the mold. But that's something you should like keep up on because your seal isn't gonna work as well if it's gunked up with all of this stuff. And you don't really want mold in where your food is. Right, So totally makes sense. Hey, do you have any of those freezer pops? I have quite a few of those <laughs> freezer pops. Well, there you go. I know what we're doing after this. Yes. Enjoying that. All right, if people want to get a hold of you folks for Boss Ladies Clean, how do they do it? Um, you can call us at 330-507-3630, or you can find us on Facebook at yeah. Boss Ladies Cleaning. Hope you get on her schedule. It is worth it. I hope you enjoyed today's household hint and hack. I'll tell you what, Michael, Jamie makes it sound so easy. She has a team of people that ha can make any holiday season a little bit brighter. Heck, every, every day of the week, probably. I know I need it around here, so thank you to you both. Well, I was fortunate to be able to take a ride out to Canfield and visit our friend Carl and Julie. And when you see what their market has to offer, they have fresh turkeys, so many different types of things that you wouldn't think of for Thanksgiving. If you're having a really small gathering, you're going to want to stop there first. Of course, wear your mask. And Julie's Farm Market. We have Carl and Julie here with us Hello. again. Nice to see you, Carl. Happy Sunday. Yeah, it's a great day. The weather's been nice here. We've had yeah. an awesome stretch of weather. We're so fortunate and even more fortunate to have a family like this with a market that is open for business and with the kinds of things that you guys have for yeah. Thanksgiving. Yes. If uh, you love turkeys, we've got turkeys. If you don't like turkeys, don't worry. We've got, you, got you covered it. in so many different kinds of ways. So let's start with the turkeys, though. All right. They're so free yeah, range and they're free fresh, range, right? fresh. They're going to be ready the week of uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, we're taking orders. There's a limited supply, so once they're gone, they're gone. So order them now. Call the farm and place your order for the fresh turkeys. What is the difference between a fresh turkey and a frozen turkey? I, I don't know. Um, so the the fresh turkeys are uh, we. They, they take them in, butcher them a few days before Thanksgiving, um, like a Monday or something, 
and they'll be ready for Thursday. That's and you know, do they not, taste better? Oh yeah, because they're outside walking around. They're not in a the building. They're not, you know, they're out doing their thing the way they're supposed to. And so free range, free non range, GMO, non GMO, all the best, healthy. Stuff. You know, they eat the the grubs. They eat the grain. They eat the grass. So they've got a great balanced diet, and they just taste better. And then they make your meal that much more balanced uh, from from the get-go but if you're not a huge turkey fan some people aren't we've got this young chicken right here yeah that's uh, grown the same way same yeah, way free range and we've got some beef we got the beef roast a, a nice uh, beef roast and we've got you know pork great. also these are great prices by the way my so, gosh you can feed a whole crowd for like yeah you know this is like a big piece of meat here it's uh, it's almost six pounds here you know and uh, and this is, yeah, it's it's good. Same thing. They they're grown outside, the way they're supposed to, and they they rummage around and eat the grass and the nuts, and then they they're fed a little bit of grain and eat the hay, and so doing things the way that they're supposed, supposed to, to be, be done. done. And if you're having a few people over to your home for Thanksgiving, uh, we've got the apples, the potatoes, potatoes. and some of the baked goods. I have baked to goods. admit, I had I was trying to just pick a couple. You know me, I went crazy. Yeah. We've got, you know, um, you've got your, the pecan sweet rolls. We've got the pumpkin rolls here. Look at this one. This is great. And then we've got the great banana breads. Those are, those are excellent. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then we've got something that's a little different. People that are diabetics that are looking for a healthy cookie option. Mm -hmm. Made in Italy, sugar free. Uh, made with a lot of grain in it, a lot of fiber. This one here. Then yep. this one here is, it's got sugar. But still, um, Italian cookies. We uh, have a nice Italian line here at the farm. Are, that, you, are you are you Italian? Yeah, a little bit, a <laughs> little bit. So we little. do, you know, we, we do know what we're talking about when it comes to that kind of stuff. And it is apple picking season, and you guys Apples. have done the apple picking for us. Yeah. And my goodness, if you We've want, got, like this is uh, okay. this this bag, and we got larger bags. You know, uh, half bushel bushels of apples for your holiday meals, and we've got big buckets of potatoes. We've got 20 pound bags, 50 pound bags. And we've got the sweet potatoes down here. The sweet potatoes also, a yeah. Is this a sweet potato we, or a yam? Sweet potatoes. Okay, good. You know, we harvest them uh, about two weeks ago, so they're fresh. You can buy a, a half bushel of sweet potatoes and keep them in your basement in the dark and they will be awesome. You're awesome. No, I just <laughs> enjoy what I do. Give people the best way to get a hold of you guys, the hours, the days of the week, if you can even remember off the top of your head. Yeah, so yeah, so we're uh, it's, we're in our fall winter hours on, what is it, 10 to 5, uh, Monday through Saturday, and 9 to 4 on Sundays. Very good. And look them up on Facebook and Julie's yes. Farm Market, or come Please. on out here to the location in Canfield. Super easy to find, right, Carl? Yes. And a wonderful staff and family, I have to admit. It's been really fun over the years. Oh, yeah. We'll do like a... Pump, One of those. Yeah. Stay safe and happy Thanksgiving, everybody. All right, thank you. And this year, and Julie's Farm Market is going to be open well until to December, and that's the first time that they're doing that this year. So if you're wondering about the location or the hours, look them up on Facebook and Julie's Farm Market. And while you're out there, do me a favor, look around and take a look at the space that they've built there. We know that they went through a massive fire just a few years ago. So when you walk into that space, it's been a lot of work for that family and we're glad to see them succeeding well until the holiday season. So you don't want to miss their specials, a great family out there. So thank you for being part of the show. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, Mike Case has the opportunity of sharing with you and with me a restaurant that we've never seen on this show before. It is all because of our partnership with Steel Light. We appreciate them very much. And we know sometimes it's hard to get out to restaurants, but we're going to keep showcasing them. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Beauty Best Cafe, home of Uncle Nick's Greek Fried Chicken. Sunrise Inn, home of award-winning pizza. Weston, Maine. Come check out our poutine. Mocha House Cafe and Eatery. The famous California cheesecake. Charbonnet's Wine on the River, famous for our great wine and our charcuterie. Jack Steakhouse, famous for our cowboy ribeye. Modern Methods, famous for our craft beer. Cheers to Downtown Warren. 
No hot water? Call A to Z Dependable Services. Our fully stocked rapid response water heater specialist will get you back in hot water in no time. A to Z is the only call you need to make. Only A to Z.com. Hi, this is Alfie in the Metro Monthly Elf. I'm here to tell you about all the cool stuff you'll find at the Metro Monthly store. We have hoodies and sweatshirts and clothing for dad. We have posters and aprons and messenger bags. We have boots now, a door, plus t-shirts and caps. We have framed prints of downtown, plus note cards and maps. We have big sizes, small sizes, and plus sizes too. We have cool stuff for grandma and cool stuff for you. So stop by today and please don't delay. Our workshop is humming. The store's up and running. We're here for this season, your holiday store. So shop Metro Monthly for all this and more. Welcome back to Valley Spotlight. Just hanging out at the house uh, doing today's show. Uh, I know there's football on, so I appreciate everybody tuning in. We always had a guy kind of have to battle that, but believe me, I, I feel the same way. So anyway, uh, boy, do you ever think about starting your own business and you really didn't know much about the business? Maybe you just had a good idea and you think, well, that's not enough. Not true. Two cousins up in Trumbull County are doing it and they are doing great. Absolutely great. So we thought we'd uh, stop by, thanks to the good folks at Steel Light, our perfectly plated series continues on. We take you today to the Grill and Garden Cafe. Nick Marques and his cousin Brandon Bergana were in a tough spot. They both had full-time jobs, but were trying to start a restaurant from scratch with no experience in the industry. And that's the truth, you know, me and my cousin, we, um, we always loved the food business, uh, but neither of us were cooks. Not only that, but they were completely redoing the inside of another restaurant, the old Mizu on 422 in Warren, to get their idea off the ground. This probably started back when I would say I was in I was in high school. I was 18, 19. I'd just gotten into into bodybuilding and I'd spent some time in the Marines. I was doing a lot of lifting there. And when I came home, I was like, you know, there just aren't a lot of these healthy places to eat around here. It was like a couple years of just like not pulling the trigger with it, you know, like riding around, looking at this location, oh, I want to do it, and just visualizing what it is that you really want. And this area came up and, and was, that's it. The old music, like this was on, on my list. I wanted it before. The, the day I checked in to this place, like went out and looked at it, I seen Brandon in the gym. Uh -huh. My cousin, like, Brandon, you're never gonna believe this place. Like it just came up, uh -huh. I wanna do this. That moment, we're at the water mountain. He's like, I'm 100% in. So we figured that um, this area was in much need of it. We've seen uh, three different gyms. There's a spinning gym, a couple doors down, uh, Planet Fitness behind us. There, is, there was Physique, now Onyx, um, by the mall area. So within one mile radius, there was three gyms. So we figured that um, it'd be a nice little, nice spot for, for that. Nice spot for sure, but all that work had drained their money and they wanted to open as soon as they could. Like, dude, we're gonna start and it's gonna be you and I and we're gonna take one day at a time. And one day, dude, we're gonna hang that open sign up and turn it on, yeah. and and that's what happened. Like it was down to the wire. We we're like, dude, we have to open. We have to open now. And we just kept grinding it out until until we got there. And right about June first, the grill and garden opened. A combination of healthy foods and smoothies. Right away, they started to see some customer favorites. Yeah, so the chicken harvest bowl, the base is sweet potatoes. Um, it also comes with a rice quinoa blend, um, so it's a pretty good source of carbs. Um, it's topped with chicken and goat cheese with um, cranberries. The Steak Harvest Bowl has our gluten-free rice noodles. Um, it also comes with blue cheese, um, our Angus strip steak with, um, with carrots and um, a, a sriracha sauce. The Shrimp Bangkok Bowl is my favorite. It's um, with quinoa as the base. Um, it's topped with queso cheese, two shrimp skewers, and some pineapple. 
Um, and, the, and the smoothie we're gonna make is? So we're gonna make the most popular smoothie, which is a keto smoothie. That is made with peanut butter, avocado, MCT oil, um, and topped with hemp seeds. Yeah. With our organic protein, which is in every one of our smoothies. Of course, they're still learning as they go. There's, there's a daily plan here for constant progression. Yeah. I would say, absolutely. We, uh, we kind of put the cart before the, the horse with some of the stuff and they've gotten some of our equipment prior to even understanding our full model. So now we, we built this model around some equipment uh -huh. that we had too. Uh, it was a journey, but it was fun. Fun enough to think about franchising these restaurants out in the future. That was always in the plan, but now that plan has turned into reality. You know, I think the big thing to take away from it all is just, you know, perseverance daily regardless we opened up in in covid brandon and i never done anything before i didn't even know how to make anything on the menu you know what i'm i'm really not too surprised i knew that there was a need in this area and i feel that there was a lot of people around here that would support something like this um so i'm i'm not too surprised with the feedback that we've gotten back but i'm, I'm very humble and, and blessed that um, it is what it is right now Well, there you have it. The Grill and Garden Cafe is in Niles. It's on 422 across the street from the Best Buy, right by the mall. So it's super easy to find, cute little place, black and green sign, you're gonna like it. I had the steak bowl. I created my own steak bowl one time. I've seen the tuna tacos. All that stuff they make is really fresh and really delicious. All right, Lauren, over to you. Thank you, Mike. A very, very cool place. We're glad to be able to showcase them on Valley Spotlight. You know what else we're also glad for on Valley Spotlight? Kelly Warren. For me, for a million different reasons, and for you when you're buying a home, different ways to heat and provide energy to your home, lots of questions. She has it all covered for you, and a she is also at my home for this one. So I'll, you know, let you take a look at this one. Well, it says it right there up on the screen, Home Advantage with Kelly Warren and Associates. And Kelly, always good to see you. Thank you. You well, too. I was going to say, welcome welcome to, to my home. Yay. Right? <laughs> you made it happen for us in big ways. And the last two episodes, we mentioned that you did sell our house, mm -hmm. in, or my house, in literally like six hours. So that's why we're able to stand here. And we, you know, when we found this house, there were lots of different features that I was not used to. Yeah. Exhibit A right down here. Mm -hmm. This is um, like an insert on the fireplace and they're on all three levels of this house. And I was like, what the heck is that? <laughs> why do why would anybody want stuff like this? Well, because we're in Ohio and right. we're getting ready to be in winter. So ambiance and, you know, affordability and heat and all, all that. the good stuff. It, it should be able to, um, you know, change our energy bills, especially when it gets super duper cold out there. So that way the furnace doesn't have to be running constantly. But you've seen other properties with similar things, maybe yes. not exactly like this. Yes, the wood burners, I've seen different variations of them. But if you've got property where you have some, you know, on our old property every year we'd lose a tree. So if we had something like this where we could use that wood all year to then reheat the house, so that's perfect you know, low cost energy source. That is. Um, I've seen pellet stoves. A lot of people will do something like that outside in a garage or a st shed, you can feed it. Um, I've seen them fed with um, one property we had, had 40 acres and a cornfield and it was a corn fed pellet stove. So, um, you know, use your resources, use what you have on hand. Yeah. And then of course the solar panels are a big deal right now too. Right, we see these constant commercials for mm -hmm. solar panels and I see them on Facebook ads constantly like, you know, get $2,000 and put these solar panels on your house. Right. What does it do to the home value, to what the property looks like, and is it even worth it? Or is it just some giant gimmick? Like, what do you, I wanna know uh, your expert opinion. I think opinion. it just depends on who you are and what your interpretation is of it. There is some tax benefit, some tax return credit for um, that type of, of energy sources. There is some, of course, lower cost benefit throughout the years, but you have to factor in, if I'm only gonna live in the house for three years, I'm gonna have the burden of putting it all in and not return the, the investment over the three years. But if you're gonna live here for 30 years and you're thinking, let me put in some solar panels, you'll see that money back. So maybe just kind of sit down and figure out where your break even point is. Um, because it, it could be worth it. And those are kind of like hot button cool things with some buyers right now. Some buyers are really into that kind of stuff. So it just depends on, on who we're looking at. Well, you showed us a property that had solar panels like in the yard. Mm -hmm. Remember they were like yes. on the property. Is it better to have them on the property or like 
I would think the ones that are the new ones are probably a little bit I better. I suppose it would depend on the house and the land and you know what it is that you're going for and how many you're putting in and that kind of thing. So you might want to consult a professional and just get you know a consultation. This is a whole new world to me. Yeah. All these different ways to keep energy costs down and I have to admit as the temperature goes down it most certainly is nice to turn this blower on and to get that right. blast of heat and that warmth through the entire house. So. Lots of money. I know somebody spent on those things. Yes. I'm just glad it wasn't me. <laughs> and you get to me. have the benefit of them. Right, <laughs> exactly. So, you know, if you are looking for different types of properties that, ex you know, that are going to show off different kinds of features, you guys have so many listings and things are still moving so hot, yes. quite literally. Yep. I, I like the, the market. Is it still, still burning? The market's wonderful right now. If you're thinking of buying or selling, give us a call or a text at 330-717-2689. They will get you covered from start to finish and no question is so silly. I can tell you that right now. Thanks, Gal. Thank you. And of course, a personal thank you to Kelly always for helping us out with this show. And if you have any comments, any questions, kellystoldit.com, call or text them like she just said. They really do get back to you immediately. I'm gonna send it over to Michael. He has a look back at a theater that, my goodness, we've driven past it a million times. And I can't wait to find out more, Mike. All right, what would we do without our Valley historian, Sean Posey? He's been taking us through uh, the area, talking about old buildings and old theaters. Well, tonight he has a look at the Belmont Theater and the chance for you to learn more about his book. In late 1948, the Palatial Belmont Theater opened here near the corner of Alameda Avenue on the north side of Youngstown. Although it was designed as a neighborhood theater, the sheer size and luxury of the Belmont was aimed directly at the big four theaters downtown. The Paramount, the State, the Warner, and the Palace. Today, these masks are all that's left to remind us of the grandeur of what was perhaps the most beautiful neighborhood theater ever built in the city. Peter Wellman was the leading theater entrepreneur in the Mahoning Valley. He owned and operated no less than 14 movie houses in the area during the 1940s. By then, Wellman dreamed of building a neighborhood theater capable of competing with the big four theaters downtown, the Paramount, State, Palace, and Warner. The Belmont, dubbed the finest neighborhood house ever built in Ohio by the Youngstown Vindicator, provided all of the class, comfort, and size of a downtown theater. After less than 10 short years, and after intense competitive pressure from the downtown theaters, the Belmont closed and was transformed in 1958 into an Atlantic Mills department store, which lasted into the 1970s. Step back in time with me and revisit the golden age of entertainment. From turn of the century Nickelodeons to Keith Albee's Vaudeville Palace. From neighborhood theaters of yesteryear to your favorite drive-ins and twin cinemas. They're all featured in historic theaters of Youngstown and the Mahoning Valley. Available from the History Press. I don't know what we'd do without him. Sean Posey, that was really cool. Remember when we could go to theaters? I like that better, too. Uh, anyway, if you would like to get Sean's book for somebody for Christmas, you can do so. Guess what? You can get it at BAM, Books A Million. You can get it at Barnes & Noble, or as some people say, Barnes & Nobles. And you can get it on Amazon.com. And the, you know what's great about a book? You don't have to worry about somebody's size when you're buying them something. You just get them a book and let them enjoy. Let them read it. All right, we will be more, uh, uh, we will have more of Valley Spotlight, Extreme Home Edition, right after this break. Stick around. Papa Canzanetta's Peppers, recipe established in 1975. A family secret is now yours to share with the people who add spice to your life. Choose from mild and hot versions, plus our famous original blend too. They're the perfect punch for any dish, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We've got the recipes to prove it. Just follow us on Facebook, order online at papacans.com and pick your peck. Papacans.com, order six jars or more and qualify for free shipping. We like it hot. We're glad you do too. And it really all started with salt, with Himalayan sea salt. 
that's where it all started because of a patient who came in and told me about the benefits of salt therapy which is inhaling uh, Himalayan sea salt an aerosolized Himalayan sea salt and I found that my patients were having fantastic results using salt therapy and I wanted to know how could I incorporate the Himalayan sea salt into products that would benefit the sinuses and the skin and that's where salt me was born Welcome back to our home edition of Valley Spotlight. As we all know, the snow was flying out there, but sometimes you're still in the mood for something really good off the grill, like bratwurst, which is why Mitch and Helga have us covered. It is a winter version of a fall favorite, and I can't wait to check this one out. Hi, this is Helga. And I'm Mitch. Welcome to Home Plate Homestyle. And we cooking again. Yeah, I want to see what you're making I today. I know, look at this. Okay, this is uh, actually a bratwurst. Bratwurst. Brat yeah, they always say I can't say it right. Anyway, look at this. Look at those babies. Aren't they They're nice? They're beautiful, yeah. Yes, and what we're going to do is we're going to go... Where do you go, get these? I uh, had to type all the to Mokador. Mokador. Yep. There's a butcher shop. They make the best German bratwurst. Good tip. Aren't they good? good tip. Would you open up a beer? Oh, sure. Uh-oh. And don't show the label. That's Wolfgang's favorite. He's going to go, she stole a Using beer. Using the good stuff. <laughs> I know. And we're going to go and... Um, Okay, some beer in there. We just, About we, half a bottle yeah. or the whole thing? Should I leave this for me? For yeah, me? a little no, bit for you. Whoa, okay, yeah. We'll do it later. In, yes, and uh, I guess we're going to have to turn this on. There you go. And we're just going to go and, you know, that, that uh, hop and malt and that all goes into that bratwurst, okay? Yeah, it'll and soak it in. That, yeah, and that's going to make it such a nice flavor. What kind of heat are you putting well, in? Well, I have it on. We bring it to a boy. And then, then that's right it, now. okay? And then we shut it off. Okay, okay. yeah. Okay, now smell this. You can smell the beer. Yeah, nice and Isn't that firm. nice? Yes, yeah. it's wonderful. And you know, they just have to come to a boil and then that's fine. And then what we do is we put some milk. I'm doing it a different way. This is actually in the winter time when you can't grill anymore. You're going to do them that way. It's a different way of doing it. Okay, so we're going to put our bratwurst right in the milk. And then we're going to dump that beer. Unless you want to you want to rebottle it for Wolfgang. You know, should I go through it first? <laughs> I don't know. He might taste the bratwurst. <laughs> I, I know, I know. And what we do is now, we're going to go roll them in there. Now we're going to put a little bit of flour in because guess what I'm doing? I'm actually breading a bratwurst. Can you believe this? I know. I haven't seen this yet, but I'm very intrigued. I know. And this is how we did it at home. And you go to a restaurant in Germany, they actually have this as a dinner like that. Okay. okay. So, uh, and you, you serve red cabbage with it. And mashed now, this potatoes. this is red cabbage that you actually, you can this yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I always make a big bunch and then I, they're from last fall and it's beautiful. Yeah, it is beautiful. And I had some already to taste it if it's good. Mm -hmm. And you can warm that up if you like after a while. Okay, now we're going to just got them all wet. Okay. And now we're going to roll them in here. You know, get them nice. See? And your oil's already nice and hot. In the flour, see? Okay, now I got them in the flour. Let's see if that's hard enough. There's my trick again. There's see, trick, when the yeah. bubbles go, it's hard enough. Oops. And you know what? I like to flavor it with a little bit of uh, butter. Okay. You know, okay, because you know what? That browns it a little bit faster, okay? Right, but the oil allows it not to burn. Yeah. When you're mm -hmm. most of the yeah, oil. yeah. So, there we go. Of course, we don't all We use this later on for something I'll show you. I mean, uh, See, I'm gonna learn, you learn something from me how to cook in German, huh? Yeah, and I think I've seen this before, but I've never Did had you? them. Yeah. Because it's a unique texture, I mean. Okay, look, Mitch. Nice. Aren't they it's look beautiful? Yes. Mm -hmm. And see how that flour comes a little bit loose into, I mean, yep. cooks off, you know? And that we're gonna drizzle over our mashed potatoes. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yes, they're excellent. Really? Yeah, this is just a about nice four, five more minutes because we have them in the beer, but you can use water also if you like, okay? Yeah, if you That's like why that. they're kind of already partially cooked, okay? So they don't need to be too long in a frying pan, you know? And then they stay real juicy. And they like stay juicy right? that way, yeah. You don't cook the heck out of it. Mm -hmm. they, they look wonderful. They're real plump, like you said. Yeah, you know? they stay plump. Oh, aren't they gorgeous? Now, see, they don't need long because, like I told you before, they already have, I mean, when we have them in the beer, they're already cooked inside, you know? Yeah, look at this, look isn't at that? Look at nice. how nice and plump they are. 
I tell you, when you eat one of those, actually, you can eat two. I mean, I can't. No, well, I, you know, but, my guess is I, I would be very fat at your house. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, now we can go have a little mashed okay. potatoes and with that. And a little bit of the red cabbage. Mm-hmm. And that, that's going to be a nice dinner. Maybe put our... Okay, now, this is going to be $15. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> Cleveland prices. Yeah, and you know what we do then when they, when they serve it? You know, they make it a little like that. Uh -huh. Your mashed potatoes, you know. And that's your and trick over And now here. you take, see, I know it's a little oily, but you do have butter in there, okay? So I just take mostly that burnt, oh, burnt nice. flour, okay? And put that right over your mashed potatoes. <laughs> that's nice. And oh my God, is that good. It's delicious. Oh, the forks. Oh, and now, I hear these are heavy, so be careful. They are. And you know what we need? To... <laughs> Can oh, I cut it yes, for you? Yeah. Okay. And then you can have a piece of bread with that also. You know, rye bread with butter. Mm -hmm. That's a nice There's dense There's a full bread. That's excellent. So, let's go have a taste. Mm. Hot. Oh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. Not good. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really nice. I'm gonna have to get the try address for that. Try the potato. How you like that with that stuff on top? Mm. I got a little bit of the crunch mm -hmm. on the bratwurst. Not good. We're really good. Mm -hmm. Oh man. See, I love all your recipes. Very good. Mm -hmm. And no yeah. napkins. How's that? We nice. have no napkins, so we had a good one. Okay, I'm glad you like it. This is Helga. Now, feed us in. I'm Mitch. Bye bye now. Such a great recipe. It looks so good. I can smell it from here. If you ever see Helga or Mitch out and about in the community, just tell them you saw them on Valley Spotlight. I think that would make their day. And for now, Michael, I'm going to send it over to you because I'm just going to give you some air hugs, okay? How about that? Air hugs from here. Air hugs. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you an air high five. Hold that real steady to tell you. Mm. Like that. That is a COVID-free high five right there. Awesome, right? All right, when we come back, a really cool retro commercial. If you ever walk through the mall during Christmas, you've seen these folks. And this one goes all the way back to the 70s. You're going to love it because I'm going to love it. And you're just like me. I just know it. Be right back. Now, more than ever, is the time to be grateful for all the things that we have in our lives. At Bistro 1907, we are thankful for our great team members, great food, great drinks, but most of all, we are grateful for you. And that's why we're inviting you to the city of you to experience the beautiful lights of downtown Youngstown. And we're proud to offer a $5 children's menu and free hot chocolate. Make this holiday season one to remember for all the greatest of reasons right here at Bistro 1907. Sweeney is reinventing the way you buy cars with the Sweeney Fast Pass. It's a new way to shop with your comfort and convenience in mind. Only at Sweeney you can save 27% off MSRP on the 2020 Chevy Equinox or Trax. Or save 18% off the 2020 Chevy Traverse. Check out the Sweeney Fast Pass at SweeneyCars.com. It's fast, it's affordable, it's secure, it's car buying on your terms. Sweeney. Welcome back one last time to Valley Spotlight. My goodness, it has been such a year and I think that this is the time, the season, and of course uh, the moment in time we probably need to look around and think to ourselves what we are thankful for in the midst of elections and pandemics and so many things going on within this country, I do have to admit, I do have to remind myself every single day what I am most thankful for. And of course, my little girl, my parents, Fred behind the camera, a beautiful home, a safe place for you know our pets and our family to, to gather when it's safe to do so. I have to say that those are things I'm still very, very grateful for, but I'm also personally very grateful for the people who have supported this show. That includes you sitting there at home. It takes you to keep this whole thing going for us. All those great story ideas about 
special people or special projects, amazing businesses, things that you've never seen before, things that you've just wondered about over the years, I encourage you to just take a moment, maybe the things that you're thankful for, and send them our way. We would love to be able to share those stories right here on the show. Just look us up on Facebook, valleyspotlight.com. Mike Case and I, we, we manage that account together, so one of us will get back to you. And I have to say this, our sponsors, the people who make this show possible, so that way we can tell those stories. Mark Canzanetta, Kelly Warren, John Miles with Steel Light, Jamie from Boss Ladies Cleaning Company, you know, Carl and Julie, we've had several over the years. And when I say years, it still blows my mind that we've been able to do this together and uh, to hopefully do some good in the middle of maybe some stressful times. So uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for keeping this going for us. I know Mike has had an interesting year full of all different kinds of things and I have a feeling um, I wish I could give him a big hug right now and say how thankful I am for him and for his friendship all of these years, even when we worked at the news together at TV21. So Mike, I'll send it your way and you can tell everybody at home how to watch this because it doesn't matter where they are, right? Yes, Lauren. As a matter of fact, they can watch it anywhere. There's a lot of different places. I think ValleySpotlight.com is a great place to go because there's all the different episodes and all the different segments are there. You can go to our Facebook page, you can go to our Instagram page, or you can go to YouTube and watch the episodes as well. So I'm thankful uh, for Lauren. Uh, for the two guys you don't get to see behind the scenes, Fred and Ron, talented, talented people. Um, thankful. We're here to tell you. Just uh, nod or shake your head. What are you thankful for? You thankful for your family? Yeah, that's a good one. Are you thankful for your friends? I agree. Are you thankful for football? Oh, Natalia. Come on, football makes the world go round. Are you thankful for mommy and daddy? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna remember that Christmas is coming really fast and you have a birthday too. Yeah, that's what I thought, that's what I thought. Uh, and thanks for watching. So um, if you are my age, you remember Hickory Farms, especially if you went to the mall during Christmas time, they'd have the kiosk there right in the middle and uh, and the really cool commercials that went along with it. Thankful for you guys, the viewer, right Natalia? Yes, thanks for watching Valley Spotlight. Here's your retro commercial for the week and we'll see you again next week. Bye-bye, happy holidays. Hi, how are you again? Yeah, I have some last minute gift problems. Don't worry, Hickory Farms has over a hundred gift packs. Gifts with mild cheddar cheese, smoky bar cheese, we are the super cheese market. Uh, yes, and Hickory Farms specialties like beef stick and sweet hot mustard. Oh, look, I'll just put myself in your hand. Okay, <laughs> let's see. It's 14 L's. Mm -hmm. How many reindeer? Well, there's Dasher, Dancer, and If you like this video, subscribe to Valley Spotlight on YouTube and be sure to click on the notifications bell so you know when we've got some new stuff. You also can like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and subscribe to us on Vimeo or our Roku channel. Why should young people care about the spread of coronavirus? Well, we know that people with underlying medical conditions over the age of 60 are at highest risk but they've got to get it from somebody. So we're asking everyone to be selfless for others so that we can protect those who are most susceptible. Not going to bars, not going to restaurants. It all just means physical separation so that you have a space between you and others. For more information on how you can social distance, please go to coronavirus.gov.